Good morning, Grace. Uh, as you can see, the sun is shining. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. Uh, as you can hear, uh, the furnace is running. Um, guys, uh, I, I, I love the Psalms. Sometimes, uh, sometimes the Psalms confuse me. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes I look for the sense or I look for the structure and I just don't see it right away. Um, and today's psalm is, is one of those things where it took me a little bit. I was looking at it and I'm like, okay, where's the, what do we learn from this, right? So let's pray and then let's uh, check out this psalm. I think it's, it's really interesting the way he wrote this. Heavenly Father, um, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for the gift of life. Uh, it's strange that it takes something like a pandemic, uh, like a fear uh, that, that spreads over the world. Uh, it takes something like that sometimes to help us to appreciate the gift of each, every, each and every day. God, thank you so much that you give us life. Um, even when we're sick, we could be thankful for the life you've given us. Um, Lord, I ask that you would please be with your church. Uh, be with us today and help us to learn from your word. Um, it is, we, we want to be focused rightly on your word. We want to live our lives out of a right apprehension of your word, in obedience to your word. We want to live in such a way that would show the glory and the beauty of the gospel to the world. Please, Father, as we come to your word this morning, help us to rightly understand it and rightly apply it. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, verses 113 through through 120. Let's go ahead and read it. Um, one thing that I would, 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 uh, would caution you to notice here, which I think is pretty cool, is that back and forth, sometimes within one, uh, one verse and sometimes between two verses, we have this comparison of those whose trust is in God and those whose trust is not, as, as he puts it in the beginning, the double-minded people. Um, and, and this psalm was really helpful for me in understanding a little bit more about what a double-minded person is, because I think that uh, the psalmist here uses double-minded in the same sense that James uses the word double-minded in, in uh, James 1, uh, 8. So, Pay attention to the contrast here that happens every once in a while, okay? Uh, or not every once in a while, but uh, regularly throughout the psalm. I hate double-minded people, but I love your law. You are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word. Away from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commands of my God. Sustain me, my God, according to your promise, and I will live. Do not let my hopes be dashed. Uphold me and I will be delivered. I will always have regard for your decrees. You reject all who, who stray from your decrees, for their delusions come to nothing. All the wicked of the earth you discard like dross. Therefore, I love your statutes. My flesh trembles in fear of you. I stand in awe of your laws. So, uh, in the beginning, uh, he starts with, I hate double-minded people, but I love your law. Uh, I always wonder, you know, when, he, when you see a psalm start like that, uh, how bad is the problem that the psalmist is writing about? Um, well, I'm not really sure, uh, but in this situation, double-minded people is what caught my attention right away. Uh, because <clears throat> when we think about double-minded, um, you know, according to our vocabulary, double-minded is somebody who can't make up their mind. Double-minded is uh, somebody who goes back and forth between two decisions, and we recognize that we're always going back and forth between two things. You know, I'm not really sure if I should do this or if I should do that. Uh, sometimes where the word isn't um, super obvious in a decision, like should I take this job or that job? Uh, sometimes it's we just don't know, right? Um, there's lots of decisions that we make, I think, that are very difficult because there's not really a moral implication sometimes in, in either one. So it's, it's like, it's not really a moral decision. What do I do? But that's not what double-minded is biblically. Uh, double-minded biblically is not that at all. And I think the psalmist helps us to understand that 
uh, within these chapters. Why? Because he st- or these verses. Why? Because he starts. I hate double-minded people. So what is a double-minded person, according to the psalmist here? Number one, it's somebody who doesn't love the law of God. Notice the contrast here. I hate double-minded people, but I love your law. Then, you are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word. So the psalmist is comparing himself with double-minded people. And so we can understand what is a double-minded person. Well, a double-minded person is not someone who sees that their refuge, their shield, or their protection uh, is in God, and they haven't put their hope in the word of God. So, uh, a refuge and a shield. Both of these are, are, are protection. So a person who understands that their only hope, their only protection, they're weak, but God is strong, right? Their only hope, their only protection is in God himself. And the way to understand and the way to um, put that hope into practice is by trusting in the word of God. That is, reading it, knowing it, studying it, understanding it, seeking to understand it better, and obeying it. Right? So right there, we see a difference between a double-minded person and the psalmist. A double-minded person does not have this kind of attitude about God. They don't have this kind of hope in God. They haven't put their trust in God to the degree that that they are trusting in His Word over their own uh, immediate desires or own immediate um, feelings about what to do. So then let's look at, at, at... 115. Away from you, evil evildoers, that I may keep the commands of my God. See, a double-minded person, right, because he's talking about double-minded persons, uh, people versus himself, a double-minded person doesn't understand that he has to be careful about the company he keeps. Whereas the psalmist does. He's like, no, if I get too close, if I allow myself to be influenced by, by, by people who are doing the wrong thing, I might slip. I might fall. And then again, he goes back to uh, taking refuge in God or, or understanding that he needs um, to be sustained, to be supported, to be strengthened by God. Sustain me, my God, according to your promise, and I will live. God, if you, according to your word, the promises that I see in your word, will sustain me as my hope is in you, I'm asking you to do that. That's what I'm asking you to do. According to your word, don't let my hopes be be uh, dashed or, or dismayed. Don't let my hope in you prove fruitless. God, I'm depending on you. Here, the psalmist isn't even really trusting in his faith in God, if that makes sense. A lot of people that, well, my faith is strong, or my faith is superior, or my faith... And even here, the psalmist is not ashamed to say, even my faith, that everything's going to turn out all right, is sometimes wavers. So I need you, God, to sustain me according to your word. So a double-minded person is not necessarily somebody who has um, has doubts that everything is real about their their um, their devotion to God. Does that make sense? Like it's not that they're necessarily doubting God Himself, but they might be doubting their devotion to God. Anyway, the next thing is this: the next verse is the same. Psalms, uh, or sorry. Verse 117, uphold me and I will be delivered. I will always have regard for your decrees. So he says, God, if you uphold me, if you support me, if you give me strength, then I know I'll be delivered. He says, I always have regard for your decrees. I always consider your word. Again, this is an understanding that in every situation, the psalmist says, I'm going to think about your word before I act. Whereas a double-minded person obviously is the opposite, right? Uh, A double-minded person, even if they are a religious person, they'll do uh, what the Bible says when it's convenient. They'll maybe even talk about the Bible in certain situations. And yet, when it comes down to a situation where it's inconvenient to obey the Word of God, they're not going to. And they're not going to necessarily consider the Word of God before they make a decision. Whereas the psalmist says, I'm going to always regard your decrees in every situation. Verse 118, uh, this is something I think that's really important. He says, uh, you reject 
all who stray from your decrees, for their delusions come to nothing. So what does he mean by this? Straying from your decrees doesn't mean making a mistake in a situation, right? We all make mistakes in a situation. Um, again, showing how the, the double-minded person, he just walks away whenever it's convenient. That Their delusions come to nothing. The understanding, I think here, is that when a person strays intentionally from the commands of God, because of a convenient situation, they have a delusion. They think, in this situation, I know what to do, and the Word of God isn't really applicable, if they even think about it at all. I know what to do. I know best. Um, and really, it's a declaration that they, are, they know more than God, right? This is rejection of God. This is rebellion against God. This isn't making a mistake. That's not what the psalmist is talking about. Their delusion here is a, is a strong indication he's talking about people who actually believe themselves wiser than God. Or in a moment, right? They would never say, hey, I think I'm wiser than God, but by their actions they show it. By their disregard for God's word, they believe that they have uh, the answer to the problem or to the, solu um, the situation at hand. So they're delusional because they think they're wiser than God. Whereas, like in 117, he says, like, I'm always going to have regard for your word, whatever the situation. Verse 119, all the wicked of the earth you discard like dross, so I love your statutes. The wicked are going to be cast aside. The wicked are going to suffer eternally apart from God. The wicked... Uh, I think that we see a lot of this reflected, this idea reflected in Proverbs, that the wicked have this idea that they're going to pursue this thing, whether it's money, fame, relationships, whatever it is, uh, they're going to pursue this thing, and they think they're actually going to get it in the end. But that, the, way, the end of that way is death, right? We see that idea in the Proverbs, and I think we see that idea here. He says, look, God, according to your word, all these people are going to come to nothing. So I love your law. Because when I see in your word the end of the evildoer, I don't want that way. I, I, I love your law. I'm choosing your statutes. I'm choosing your word. Because I see that according to your word, the way of the wicked is death. And so in the end, we see, my flesh trembles in fear of you. I stand in awe of your laws. I think this is, looking at this, this section of the Psalms as a whole, Understanding that hope is in God, strength is in God, he's always a protector, his word is always right regardless of the situation. We have to have that continual, uh, that perpetual hope, that daily choice to trust, sometimes a situational choice to trust in God's word over our own um, untrustworthy instincts. Um, and then rightly, we can have a right understanding of the word double-minded. A double-minded person does not do that. They don't have a continual hope in God's word. They don't have a desire to continually obey God's word. Um, they have a desire to continually please themselves. And they don't really fear God. This is right fear of God, right? Choosing his word in every situation because you know it's true and you know the end of those who don't. You know the end of the double-minded, those who don't put their hope in God, those who don't continually put their hope in God. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much for teaching us more about what it is to be double-minded and what it is to, to be a person who, who truly trusts in you, puts our faith in you, who, who lives according to your word, who tries constantly putting your word in front of us, confessing when we fail continually returning, continually turning in faith, continually grateful for the gospel of Jesus Christ, without which this attitude of, of dependence on you is impossible. The way you change our hearts and our minds through the power of the gospel, um, that allows us to not be double-minded people. So God, we thank you and we praise you for the gospel. We thank you and we praise you for your word. Father, I ask you to be with us to be with your church. Help us to have a right apprehension of you, a right understanding of your word, and help us to obey for your glory. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Grace, uh, we love you. We miss you. 
Read God's Word. Think on it. Let it shape your mind. Let it shape your heart. Make your decisions based on what the Word of God says, not based on what you're feeling in the moment, and you will not be a double-minded person. Have a great day.